<laughs> Heavenly Father, we just give you the praise, honor, and glory. Father God, we just take this time, Father God, to dedicate it to you, Lord, that you truly do receive all the glory, not only myself, Father God, but as Pastor Walt spoke and all the speakers that are coming for the next few days, Lord. I pray you anoint, bless everyone, Lord. May their tongues, Lord, just be like a pen of a skillful writer, Father God, just using that, the words, Lord, to, to speak about who you are, what you're doing in our lives, and who your precious Son, Jesus Christ, is, Father God. And allow the Holy Spirit, Lord, just to touch hearts and help people make decisions once and for all, Father God, of them choosing to let you be you in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, you know, I tell you, for me, you know, I've been trying to let God be God in my life now since 2003 when I finally asked Jesus Christ into my heart. It was my prison cell, as you saw. And uh, I've never had so many struggles. When I first started working for Pastor Walk, I didn't even know this, but he would tell me, man, you don't have no spiritual warfare. You're not getting no spiritual warfare. And I was like, it would go right off me because I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. If you mention the word drama... I knew what drama meant, okay? But I hadn't connected it yet with spiritual warfare to the level that I do now. And I'll tell you what, in the last month, month and a half, golly, serving the Lord and choosing to do God's will, it has been nothing else in my life. And that's the truth, okay? You guys know me. I'm pretty straight up. For those of you who know me, I'm real fair. I help you as much as I can, but I don't know about what I got to say when I'm dealing with a situation. You know, I, I believe in confronting in the way that I do at the level that needs to be confronted. Amen. Sometimes I'll take you to the side so only you hear nobody else. So you can't come back and say something about me that I said to Pastor Wiley because you ain't got no witnesses. That's a joke. That's a joke. I mean, it's a great house, but it's been, it's been, um, shoot, I might as well go all out there, shoot, I've been known to take guys to the bathroom and jack in the box, so, anyways, not really, I just, you know, I have been struggling, and I, you know, recently, <clears throat> my wife and I started taking, uh, um, medication for, uh, it's called interferon, and man, that's been a battle for me, and I know for her as well. But um, going through a lot of changes, you know. And I'm just asking God, Lord, man, what the heck's going on here, you know? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling, you know? I know I expect it. I've heard stories. I've watched people go through this stuff when I was in the joint. And I guess you got to experience it. And it takes me to this. Letting God be God. you got to truly experience that in your life. To really understand what that really means and what he really wants to do for you. Why he really sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for each and every one of us because of his love that he had for us. And the plan and the purpose that he set forth, not only as individuals, but as a body. Especially here at Church on the Street. You're not here by accident. You're not here by mistake. If you came through them lobby doors, it wasn't because, you know, uh, it was because of God. Yeah. And you got to believe that. You might not understand it yet, but somewhere deep, 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 deep down inside, believe, Lord, this is of you. And whatever's happened, I'm just going to learn this trust that you're doing this. You know, I've been, I've been telling, I've been telling Pastor Larry this morning because I don't know what I've been going through, but. For like for the last few three weeks, I've been trying to really get in the Word, but to study for this. And I mean, I read the Word, and I do that, and I pray, but I just couldn't get, man, I was like, this morning I told, man, I don't know what's been going on. Maybe I should have went to Larry Pastor, Larry Pastor Walt sooner, but I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting attacked. I'm like, man, what's going on? I can't even get a message, nothing, nothing's happening. Yeah, I believe so. But Pastor Larry told me, well, you know what? That happens to me once in a blue moon. I said, I ain't seen a blue moon. But. <laughs> so, 
I hope that's not an indication that that's not, you know, never mind. I'm colorblind anyways, so. Um, you know, and, and then recently I just gave him the word, just stop. Stop. And I thought God was telling me, stop acting the way you've been acting lately. You know, been really frustrated, angry, just going through changes because of that. And, I don't want to use this as an excuse, but the medication I'm on, and I'm like, nah, I don't hear it, I, I'm fine. You know, because at one time I stood, and I was a proud vessel. I was a solid vessel, and nothing could break me, nothing. You know, and that's when I was locked up, and that's how way I carried myself. And the time that I did solitude, solitary confinement, I did my routine, and there, nothing was gonna change me. And I would laugh in my mind to the cops, and you ain't never gonna break me. I ain't never gonna renounce whatever you are affiliating me with. Because this is who I am. But I learned that God is the potter, and we are the clay. And I was a very weak vessel. I was a damaged vessel. And God made me the way he did at that point to show me how weak I really was to learn to understand what God had to do in my life to not perfect me because he'll never perfect me in my own understanding. In his righteousness, I'm made perfect. I'm washed clean through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I'm still that crack pot that he, that he made me to be. And I believe everyone in here at some extent is a crack pot. That's why we end up at church on the street, amen? <laughs> But you know, and I am, and we admit it, and we embrace it, and we go forward and, and trust God to, to, to help us. You know, I'm not, I'm not your most eloquent speaker. I'm not your most, you know, I just go with, with my heart, guys. And I've struggled with this, you know, but... I know that only in a dictionary do you find success before work. And that's the truth. I learned that. And not that I'm successful, I'm just saying that I gotta, I wanna be. And I wanna serve the Lord. And I wanna do God's will in my life. There's nothing more that I want now, in my life, right now, this minute, than that. You know, I wanna be blessed according to his word. I want God to be God in my life, whatever that is. And if I got to go through frustrations and angers and pity parties and lack of understanding and whatever I struggle with or drama with, that's my own drama. That's what I'm causing myself to go through because I'm believing whatever the situation is. Because the devil, he's been doing this for many years. You know, and I was laughing right now when Pastor Wall was speaking. I was watching all these rookie pastors that are going to speak for the first time in this conference taking notes of uh, 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 what they're going to talk about. God's giving them ideas. And I just sat there laughing like, man, I remember when I was doing that three years ago, you know. So I know, hey, that's how you identify rookie pastors in here. That's just a, that's not just on the cuff. But, you know, I learned, you know, and, and really last night, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 1159 pastor. Yeah. Okay, how many know what that means? Yeah. That, 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 it's true, the last time I preached, you know, it was the day of the, that I was going to preach. I ended up watching a, a cartoon video on, on TBN and it was about Moses. And all of a sudden, wham, there was my message for the night. So, like last night, you know, last night I was in my sleep and was, I just saw the word stop. You know, and I've been thinking this and thinking this and then Stephanie had told me some a couple weeks ago. She was worried about, you know, how she was going to do children's ministry and do this and do that. And then God just told her, stop. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then that night ended up being perfect at Children's Church. She came all excited. You know, and that's what it is. Don't worry about nothing. But pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. Yes. As you do this, you'll experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. Yes. That peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live through Christ. Yes. But man, it's so easy said. Yes. Easier said than done. Because yeah. we get in our flesh. 
Because we are that crack pot that God's made us to be. At this point, no matter where you're at, God's got you right where you need to be. And he's molded you to the time that you're at for a reason. Because he's always going to be perfecting you. He's always perfecting me. Or helping me to try to be perfect. But I fall so short. Every day. Every day, especially recently. I get disgusted with what I think. I get disgusted on how I react. But you know what? I'll, I'll, I'm determined that this is going to come to pass in my life. Because anger has been an issue in my life that has destroyed me all of my life. Because I made decisions when I was angry. And some of those decisions still to this day, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. But we reap what we sow. And something comes in many ways, shapes, and forms. Like right now, I'm reaping. But what I've sown in my past by sticking that needle in my arm all them times, all them years, 24 years Amen. of heroin addiction. Amen, and you know what? I can tell you right now that I know exactly what needle it was, where I was, when I stuck it in my arm, and I knew the dude had hep C, and I didn't care. Wow. I was sick, and I needed a needle. I didn't even let him clean his needle after he was done. Wow. I just took it from him. I said, give me that, and I just oh, wow. fixed it. I know that's exactly when it happened because I knew he had FC and he was wow. in stage two at that time. You know, I didn't get it. That's where I was at. So, I have to stop. I have to slow down because I know me. I tend to go, man, and I just want, and then when things aren't going my way, it's like Pastor Wall, he's, he, 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 he makes a decision to do something, that's it, and I'm changing it. But I'm, I'm, I'm like that in a lot of ways. And, and I need to learn to un let God be God more in my life. Because I'm learning. I've been, I've been serving the Lord five years out here on the streets now. Or out here in the church in the street. I came straight out of prison. And I thought I'd learn to submit. But I really never had the opportunity to be around Christians because I was locked down all the years. That the only time I had fellowship with anybody is when they came with prison fellowship, maybe three times a month for about five, ten minutes. Wow. That was the extent. And I started craving and desiring fellowship. Yeah. I started desiring to go to church. And yeah. so that's when I found through the Bible radio with J. Vernon McGee. Yeah. And that's when I would go to church. That's when my mentor was on a daily basis, my teacher and everything. My first tie that I ever sent to anything, any place was through the Bible radio because that's why I was getting fed. And that's what I had learned. But when I came here, I had to really, really learn to submit. You know, I had to learn to truly submit to where God had placed me. The people he had put in my past. Pastor Wall, John Berger, and many more. Pastor Greg, he's the one who interviewed me when I was in prison. You know, he's the one who gave me my first pass on a Sunday. I didn't even know I was going on it. You know? I had to learn to look at these men that God had put in my path and learn to know, because in my past, in my past, I would have never submitted to these men. I would have, you know, you know, some of you know, I was like, yeah, you know what, I'm good. This is what I do to guys in prison fellowship when they come to my cell. They come to my front door of my cell and say, oh, I'm good. And I turn around and act like I'm making my bed. My bed was already made. <laughs> but out of respect, I would do that. But then I turn my back like, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you guys. I had to learn to do that. I had to learn. I learned that here at Church on the Street. I learned that here. I truly did to submit. And you, you guys know me now. A lot of you guys have been around. How I've truly follow my heart and what God's done with me in regards to my authorities. I know about authority. Okay? I've had a little authority here and there. So I can relate to the story in the Bible about Cornelius yeah. and what he told Jesus Christ. Amen. You know? But I had to learn to submit to Pastor Walt to the extent that I felt God had put in my heart to do so. 
And then I, at one point, I, 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 I realized, you know what, this man needs Gina. That's what I told myself. Meaning, he needs backup, he needs help. And God really put that in my heart, and I did everything I could to do, figure out a way to help him. And four and a half years later, I'm still here struggling like I would have, but, you know, I'm just tugging along forward right now. Actually, right now, I'm just standing still. I'm waiting on God because it's his battle, not my battle. And he tells me, you know, to take my position and stand still, and I'm going to see the Lord's victory Amen. over this. And I believe that. So I had to learn. I had to really learn to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And I want to go into submission. It, it, it talks about it in, in Hebrews 12, 9 and, uh, through 12. Okay. I, I meant to this one part I do on you. But I, I want to, I love reading the Word of God when I read it. And I'll tell you what, you know, there's nothing better than to just even touching on it. But it's talking about it in uh, verse 9. It says, since we respect our earthly fathers who discipline us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirit and live forever? For our earthly father disciplines us for a few years during the best, doing the best they knew how. But God discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful, but afterwards there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. See, submitting, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the reward of doing this. You know, that in the right time, and for those that are trained in the right way, you're going to just have a peaceful harvest. I needed peace in my life at one time, especially when I was at SMU too, in the years when stuff was changing, and some of you might know what I'm talking about, but there was drama, big time, ugly, dirty, cutthroat, nasty, and I couldn't believe what was going on. That's why that guy hung himself, okay? Because he renounced because of political stuff going on, and it was ugly. And he chose to get away. Then he couldn't take what he did. And I know the dude. That's why he couldn't handle what he did by renouncing. So he just took himself out. I know what I, I know that I know. That's why he did it. And I needed peace. So learning to have peace, I had to learn to submit. And I thought I had peace in the joint. I did. But it just, God takes you to different levels. Yeah, From glory to glory. Victory to victory. Faith to faith. It's all right here in his word, guys and ladies. If you learn to trust, like it says in Proverbs 3, 5. You know, let's go ahead real quick. And you, a lot of you know these scriptures. But, who cares? I was going to read them again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you the path to take. I know my I know my Lord has shown me the path of what the path He's put me on, what He's blessed me with, the people He's added in my life, the relationship He's allowed me to have with Him, the relationship and the marriage that I'm that I've been blessed with with my wife. The relationships of adding the children into our lives, the relationship with my own daughter, just restoration all the way around. Just what the, what the pastor prayed earlier about the canker worm taken away, you know, and how God's giving it back. Oh man, it's it's like a, you know, ten, thirty, hundred fold. It's it's past that for me. I ain't stopping at a hundred. I'm keep going. Until God takes me home, I'm going to keep taking what God's got to give me, the blessings that he has to give to us, and I'm just going to, and that's by just submitting and trusting. Deuteronomy 28. I learned that, you know, I heard Pastor Walt talk about it for so many, many times, and finally, whoop, sunk in. You know, I had the privilege of living here at the Dream Center for like three, three and a half years. Okay, and every time this man was on property, if you guys remember, I was by his side the whole time. 
one time he came and said, prayer vigil, classes, church, his office, whatever. Because I was gleaming from this man because I know God had put it in my path for me to learn from him. I had to learn to submit. I had to learn to trust. Then I had to learn to obey. You know, I, you know, where's Gator at? Here you go. Yeah. Well, most of the gray hair he has because Gator. <laughs> but I think I put one or two in the last couple of years on his head myself. <laughs> and I'm serious. Well, Gator did it. Yeah, gotta blame somebody. <laughs> well, he's been around longer. You know. But in Deuteronomy 28, it talks about obeying the Lord. Obeying the Lord. Let me find Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. 28 1. It says, if you carefully obey the Lord, your God. And carefully keep all his commands that I am giving you today. The Lord will set you high above all the nations in the world. You will experience all of these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. And then it tells you what blessings he's talking about. And then I had to learn... Through my favorite book in Philippians chapter 4. It's my favorite chapter actually. I already, I already quoted verse 6 through 7 and 8. But also verse 9. It talks about putting things into practice. Putting these things into practice. When we get a chance to read that. Well. Here we go. I'm going to read it. That's what I said I'd be doing today. Amen. Anything else, I'm going to read out of the book of the Lord, the Bible, to you guys. <clears throat> 4 9. Let's backtrack and go to 8. It says, Now, brothers and sisters, one final thing fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. <clears throat> Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you've heard from me and, sh and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. That's the thing. You know, there's many different talents, talents in, his, in his room. You, you've heard the praise and worship? We brag about our praise and worship to him because of the anointing of the Lord is here with them. Amen. But you know what? Some of you have heard me say this. I brag about church on the street and the outreaches. But one thing I know that no matter where church on the street goes, the anointing of the Lord is with us when we leave this place. Amen. Because the outreaches, everything, any outreach, they are so blessed because of the work that is being done. It's God's work. It's for God's purpose. It's to win souls for the kingdom of God. It's to reach the lost and introduce them to a special friend. And I hope that that special friend of mine becomes a special friend to you at one point in your life because he will change your life. No matter where you're at right now, what you're thinking, how bored you are, even if you're falling asleep, Lord, I pray you speak to him in, the, in his sleep right now. <laughs> see, when you stand up here, you get to see everybody. So, you know. So when you're up there, imagine what God sees. He sees it all. 